This is Brad A. Milford with the Unlimited Business Wisdom Podcast, where business owners, you got it, they share their wisdom. It's short and to the point to respect people's time. And because we know transforming possibility happens super fast and it leads to lasting results. So let's get to it. Let's dive in. Question number one, in a few sentences, tell me who you are and what you do. All right. Well, thanks for having me, Brad. I really appreciate it. My name is Gary Levy. I am the founder of Biltmore Savings Consultants, and uh, we're an expense reduction service. We help companies increase profit by saving them money. Money's good. Money's good stuff. <laughs> Especially in these times, right? Everybody needs to save money. And, uh, you know, we've got some really creative ways to help them do that. 100%, 100%. Love having you on. Question number two, what's the best thing, Gary, about being in business? I just love being my own boss. You know, you, you get out of it what you put into it. And, uh, you know, I spent 40 years in corporate America and uh, loved the majority of my roles, learned a heck of a lot, sharpened my teeth, you know, growing up in all different uh Fortune 500 companies, as with a a lot of big companies, um, had a a lot of strong mentors that really showed me the ropes and taught me a lot. And um, it's just, you know, it's a a totally different experience having to go into work and report to someone and, you know, you you kill yourself all year long. And then at the end of the year, it depends on how the company did and what the bonus pool is like. And, you know, are you gonna get what you were hoping for or what you expected? And it really is to a great extent out of your control. You know, being your own boss, it's entirely up to you. You know, you get out what you put into it. So I do love that aspect of it. And I love that you're in the entrepreneur space now. You got the first one we talked, you have some deep experience in, in, the, in the work field. Yeah. Um, operational experience, financial experience. I mean, you have some deep work with some pretty heavy hitting companies. Yeah. So do you, do you, like, what are your thoughts about that? Do you, do you really love the entrepreneurial space now? Are you falling in love with it? I, I am loving it. You know, I've been an, this is my first time entrepreneur, uh, you know, got started around November of last year. So it's still real fresh and uh, I'm learning a lot, but I've been able to transform and really leverage my organizational skills that I worked with throughout my entire career to put that against my day-to-day activities. So I'm very organized in my approach and you know what I do day-to-day and um, it's already starting to see big benefits and I'm just loving it. The space that I'm in, I'm helping companies, I'm helping other entrepreneurs and small, mid and large businesses to save money. And it's just getting that appreciation from them. You know, it's nothing better. Love it. I love hearing that. Every time I love hearing that. Question number three, just leads directly right into question number three, like the operational and the systematizing and that kind of thing. We hear from other business owners right now. They're getting so much business, Gary, that sometimes the chaos causes overwhelm. Can you share your thoughts on that, please? Yeah. I haven't seen the chaos and I hope not to see the chaos, right? I think that so much business, you know, my first thought is that's a nice problem to have, right? So I think it's up to the individual to make sure that they take a pause and throttle back as needed to evaluate the situation and to put whatever measures are needed in place before chaos sets in. The worst thing that can happen to an entrepreneur, I think, or any company is to have failure as a result of your success. I mean, you don't want to be so successful that you can't handle it. And then you end up, you know, failing by producing, you know, subpar products or delivering subpar service. It's not what I you know, expect ever happen. So I make sure that everything we do is organized, is top-notch service in our delivery, in our client interactions. So love it. I love the the fact that you stand for the integrity and you know about that throughout all there's a lot of new new business owners don't understand. And I I hear a lot of people in the space of like, I just need leads. I need leads. But that doesn't really solve the problem of (laughs) delivering excellence, does it? No, absolutely. Love it. Question number four, what other successful business owners like yourself, of course, Gary, should be on the Unlimited Wisdom podcast? Yeah, so I've got a few for you. And, uh, you know, the first guy that comes to mind is a good friend of mine, uh, worked uh, with and for uh, Paul Sabetic. He's a um, 
registered investment advisor and uh, you know is a great guy running his, his own portfolio, helping uh, individuals, uh, family offices with their investing uh, their, their money. Um, the second individual is uh, someone I've also worked with through the years, great guy, uh, Richard Luftig. He is a co-founder of Castle Placement. They're an investment bank helping to raise private equity and venture capital for uh, small and uh, mid-sized firms. So he's a great one to talk to as well. And I'll give you a third uh, fellow by the name of Tyron Giuliani. And Tyron is from Australia and now living in Japan. And he's got a couple of businesses going. So he's got the, a wedding business um, and he's also a LinkedIn guru. Uh, so he trains individuals on how to use LinkedIn to reach out to their client base. And he's a, he's a great third guy for you. Love it. I love how you describe what each one of them did. I mean, this tells me a little bit about you and how you do business. And that's that's fantastic the way you showcased um, them in the way that you did. So fascinating. Look forward to connecting with all three of them and, and being able to highlight their business as well. So let's dive in a little bit, right? Let's let's share the wisdom. This is about business wisdom. So Gary, what piece of wisdom would you share with other business owners? Yeah, so you know, the first thing that comes to mind is I think that um, you need to dress for success, right? My entire time in corporate America, before I was managing, directing, leading a team, I would always make sure that I arrived at the office looking professional. And that carried through. So that was one of the things that stood out for me. And now that I'm working from home, I think the same thing applies. You know, I get up in the morning and I get dressed before I go into my home office. And uh, I think it makes a difference. If you're on the phone with a client, you know, you're not going to come across as effectively if you're sitting in your pajamas, right? There's a time for the Bob Marley shirt, you know, and there's a time for looking professional. And I feel like I'm working. So I, I get dressed every morning before I come into the office. Um, you know, the, the second thing I think is you need to have a schedule, right? It doesn't have to be nine to five, doesn't have to be eight to four, whatever your schedule is, you need to have a schedule and you need to hit it consistently, right? It comes back to one of my initial comments, you get out what you put in. So I generally will be in my office at eight, eight o'clock in the morning and I'll work through six o'clock at night. Now, throughout the day, I take breaks. And I think that that's important also to clear your head, right? So on a nice day, I'll go for a walk. And, you know, I'll have lunch. I'll go for a walk around the neighborhood. We've got a real nice area here. In the heat of the summer, I've got a backyard pool. I'll even go out and spend a half an hour in the pool swimming around and just to decompress and, you know, take a, take a mental break and then get back to work. But, you know, I, I look to put in that consistent uh, set of hours every day uh, to make sure, you know, you get out what you put in. And uh, the third, I think, is you need to be organized. Coming back to the skills that I developed throughout my career, um, I think it's very important that you have an organized and consistent approach every single day. So I have, you know, right now in my role, I spend most of my day either on the phone, emailing, Zoom calls, or on LinkedIn. And when I'm on LinkedIn, you know, I'm reaching out to new connections, I'm nurturing those connections, I'm having exchanges, I'm then trying to arrange for discussions to see how I can help a client in their particular space, what their needs are. And um, it's very difficult to try to do all of those things every hour of the day. So you've got to break out your day and structure it in such a fashion that it works. So I look at it on a weekly basis and I'll do, you know, my reach outs for connections using an AI tool. I use duck soup and, you know, that reaches out to try to form connections, but then you have to follow up once those connections are accepted to validate, you know, are they in fact good leads for you and then reaching out and starting that nurturing and forming that relationship. Um, so I'll separate that, you know, for three days a week where I have my reach outs and then in between is where I'm fitting in the nurturing, the follow up, the updating of my CRM. I use uh, pipe drive as my CRM tool, um, but managing that whole sales funnel, if you will, um, requires an organized approach. And uh, that's what I try to do. So. Love it. Three really great points. Dress for success. For sure. For sure. Um, 
I I just remember when I was a child reading a book about that and how the importance of that. I think it was the same name, Dress for Success, mm. or something like that. They're so so important. Um, and I think I think there are a lot of people today that have gotten a little bit relaxed. But it I there's no way I could agree with you more. When you set yourself up for success, when you feel successful like that, you definitely represent and show up in a specific way. Structure. Yeah. Oh, Gary, you speak my language. <laughs> I love hearing it. Um, going back to, if anybody doesn't know, Parkinson's law, time expands with the time you give it. Um, so you just nailed that description. Absolutely love that. That's gold, uh, especially for a lot of new entrepreneurs. They say uh, people move from the nine to five to the to the 24 seven, right? Mm. <laughs> so if we don't have a little bit of structure around that, just so, so important. And, and I love also how you just gave, dropped real value and, and just gave a view almost. I mean, I could picture you working, you know, working your system sales wise. It's just great value, Gary. Fantastic. I, I know because I know you walk the talk. And when you talk about systems, you talk about organization. I know how organized you are. I love it. We could talk forever. Let's mm. switch gears for a moment. What's the most fun vacation you've ever had? I'm dying to know. You know, I've, I've heard you say before, you know, we, uh, we, we live, we work to live, not live to work. Right. So uh, I got to say, Brad, you know, and I, I'm, I'm probably biased here, but uh, Jamaica West Indies is my favorite spot. And um, probably, probably because, you know, I'm from there. Right. So my parents immigrated here when I was 14, we moved to New York and um, I just love going back. I've got so many childhood memories, the white sand, the blue water, uh, Negril, Montego Bay, Ocho Rios, you know, it's just all great. And uh, the one that stands out is a, a trip I took with my wife, you know, to Negril. We went to a famous spot down there, Rick's Cafe, where, the, you know, the locals do cliff diving. Uh, we went horseback riding, you know, through the mountains, through the water, you know, it was just, just a wonderful time and great memory. So that's let's go. Time. Let's go. Yeah. I'm ready. You ready? Yeah, man. Yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Thanks for being on, Gary. I really appreciate the investment of your time. I appreciate you being here. I appreciate you sharing real, real value with the listeners, the people watching and listening. I do want to spend, you, you have multiple things going on. I'm fascinated by what you do. So I know that you're looking to save um, SME, small businesses, uh, money. That's yeah. one of the primary things. Um, but you have multiple ways that you do it as well. Can you share just a little bit more? Because I really want to, yeah. I want I want people to hear and know the deep value that you bring in that space. Absolutely. So um, I, I partner with a, a number of different firms who are all experts in their respective lanes, right? The one firm that is the most far reaching is a firm by the name of Optimally. And what they provide is uh, benchmarking of any business's operating expenses against a $6 trillion data lake with information that they've gathered from over 10 million US businesses. It allows them to take any general ledger from a company as small as 500,000 in annual gross revenue, all the way up to billions and benchmark all of the operating expenses and identify where you're being overcharged versus your peers. And they're able to take that hard based evidence and go to your suppliers and negotiate reductions. And it's just fantastic how we're saving companies money left and right. I have other business uh, partners as well in the automating accounts payable, in improving custom healthcare offerings, and also a shipping solution that is um, also doing a fantastic job these days. You may be familiar with all of the capacity constraints that are being reported. It seems like every other week, there's an article in the journal talking about UPS or FedEx or DHL imposing capacity limits on what they're collecting from places. Well, this company that we uh, you know, represent, ShipStore, offers a software solution that is multi-carrier and it will allocate your shipping across all the different carriers so you never have a capacity issue. They've got over 20,000 clients doing over 200 million packages a year. It's just phenomenal. Best way to find out more is to look me up on LinkedIn. That's where I have all the details. And, uh, you know, there are a lot of Gary Levy's on LinkedIn, but I am the only Gary D. Levy. Uh, so if you put Gary D. Levy with no break in between, I'll come right up to the top and you see all love the details. It. Beat me to the next question. And I love the description of that. So 
if you're looking to save money on your business and you're just not sure about the the ways to be able to do that, I highly encourage you to reach out to Gary. So really appreciate you being on. I love the value you dropped. Um, thank you. Just thank you. Appreciate you. This is Brad A. Milford with the Unlimited Business Wisdom Podcast, where business owners making five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. It's not all about the money. It's about saving the money. It's it's really about sharing their wisdom globally to create impact as well. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, Brad.